In a desperate memo, Tinubu begs governors to cajole Islamic clerics, CSOs with Ramadan largest, to call rising turmoil over hunger insecurity. Hunger and insecurity. President Bola Tonumbu is practically soliciting governors to induce Islamic clerics in their respective states with largest period, with largest to, during the Ramadan fasting period. Particularly to ask them to refrain from preaching sermons that can turn the people against his government and trigger tumult and widespread hunger, insecurity, and economic crisis assailing his tenure. Mr. Turumba appealed to the governors to leverage this auspicious opportunity of the Ramadan period to promote peaceful coexistence. This leveraging sources confirmed to people's gazette involves providing largest to the clerics and CSOs. In a confidential memo sent on the president's behalf by secretary to the government of the federation, SGF, George Akumi, to all 36 governors on February 27th, Mr. Tsunubu stated that he desired to sensitize radical Islamic clerics from leading inciting sermons during the upcoming Ramadan anticipated to commence on the 10th of March. As part of the measures, Islamic preachers were being sensitized to moderate and avoid comments capable of misleading their followers or pitching them against the government. The memo stressed, This is necessary considering the increasing calls by various groups, including the civil society organizations, CSOs, for mass action over the rising cost of living and the insecurity across the state of the Federation. The so-called sensitization was aimed at dialing down the rage citizens felt towards the government through sermons that encouraged peace and forbid demonstrators at a time when the nation was facing its worst cost of living crisis. It would be appreciated if Your Excellency could engage religious leaders, CSOs and other critical stakeholders, particularly the Nigeria Council of Ulamas at both the state and the local government levels to leverage the auspicious opportunity of the Ramadan period to promote peaceful coexistence in the country, Mr. Tirumbo pleaded through his SGF last Wednesday. Sources told the Gaza that some states said they would follow the recommendation and induce clerics and civil rights groups with largest to deploy a measured tone at this critical period for the country. Some critics have recently said the president is facing public denunciation because he did not have a strong mandate to begin with. Having scored only 36% of the vote cast during the last year's presidential election, however, the administration has rejected such a notion as unfounded. The presidency did not immediately respond to a request for comment on the memo urging governors to cajole Islamic clerics with a largesse, with largesse during Ramadan. With Nigerians' their economy worsened by galloping inflation, citizens are frustrated and angrily charged. A sermon criticizing the government could spark weeks-long demonstrations across the entire nation in a manner akin to the 2020 NSAS nationwide protest. Already, they were protesting in Kano, Oyo, Oshun, and Niger, where residents raved them, remonstrated in anguish, labeling Mr. Turumbu a thief. The National Bureau of Statistics revealed in January that Nigerian's inflation had jumped to record highs, placing 29.9%. This consequently drove food prices beyond affordability for most income earners, especially the minimum wage stood at 30,000 naira, about $10. The market survey by the Gaza showed that a single packet of 70 grams of Indomie noodles, which sold for about 150 naira as of June 2023, when Mr. Tenumbu became president, he sold for about 350 naira last month. The 50 kg bag of rice, which was sold about 30,000 in June 2023, jumped to 80,000 in February 2024. Soaring food prices evidence the inefficiency of policies like narrow floating and forced subsidy removal, which Mr. Tenumbu deployed to supposedly improve the economy. The floating of the naira drastically plunged the Nigerian currency into their streets 
and it exchanged at a historic high of nearly 2,000 Naira against $1 in February. The government gave Nigeria a palliative of 35,000 Naira for three months to soften the blow dealt by the forced subsidy removal. Still, the masses lamented that the money was only a drop in the ocean and was insufficient to mollify. Last December, Mr. Tunumbe engaged the services of road transportation companies and half transport fares for Nigerians traveling across the trunk across the country for Yulitide. Train tickets to and from Lagos to Ibadan were given to commuters at no cost. In 2024, Nigeria Customs Service likewise sold 25 kg bags of rice at 10,000 Naira as gained the market price of 40,000 Naira to cushion the cost of living crisis, where the turnouts were so massive that no fewer than 7 persons perished in the stampede. The president is also trying to market Naira among his national counterparts, including the Emir of Qatar, whom he persuaded over the weekend to invest in the Nigerian economy. Just last month, Mr. Tirumbu directed the nation's agricultural ministry to distribute about 42,000 metric tons of grain, including maize, millet and gari, to citizens to ease economic hardship. First of all, all these ones is coming out to say he told them to let us start from the beginning, Sha. So he doesn't come outside and start sounding red. Now, from the beginning, he said that he's pleading with religious leaders not to, you know, use their sermon to incite. See, Ogasi, nobody would incite anybody. At this point, everybody in Nigeria is a working bomb. It's a working time bomb. It's a ticking time bomb because the situation of the country, most especially my heart goes out to people who actually have families. If you are single this period, there is still problem. Because even living as a single person in this particular trying times, and you are not in any way connected to the powerhouse. Powerhouse means those that are related to the government. You don't you don't have any relative, you don't have any connection to the government. It is it is very difficult for you to get by. Now think of a family or think of families that have children, growing children, you know, babies who are still maybe breastfeeding zero to three years or more. I don't envy those people this period. So uh, already, everybody is like a working time bomb. Before, you could step on somebody and you tell the person, I'm sorry, and the person will smile at you, ah, no problem. But during this period, if you just as much as step on somebody, the person that can accuse you that you, you touch his pocket and want to take something. I'm telling you, tension is high. So the religious leaders do not even need to even do too much. Of course, we know that there are people who actually come out and say things that are really, really tough. But the thing is, Tunumbu's government should not even be focusing on this. They should be focusing on how to reduce this. He should stop coming out to say he has put things in place. You have put things in place, but people who are your followers or the people who you are leading have not, have not been, they're not feeling anything. Okay, he's coming out now to tell us that he actually paid 35,000 naira to people. Please, were you among those that collected 35,000 naira? No, certainly not me or even you people, right? Now he's coming out to also say, oh, he, he reduced money as in, People who are traveling to Ibadan during the literacy period did not collect money from them. They did have how far did it? People who are traveling from to to Eto and Fro Ibadan, how far? Is it true? No. And they distributed uh, rice. Did you people buy? So the thing is, all these ones are not really necessary. What is going to actually affect everyone is when the prices of things actually come down. And whatever policy he's making, he should ensure it targets bringing down the cost. Of living in the country. All right, on this note, we've come to the end of the news. So thank you for telling me to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy.